So when it comes to analyzing the network diagram for PMI exams, this is typically one of the two most challenging parts for most people. At least that's what I've found in the over two decades of getting people ready for the PMP exam. Commonly, uh, what happens is they start to feel like, well, I have to do a forward and backward pass of the network diagram because that's what my coworkers did, or that's what somebody told me you have to know how to do. Now, we've got another video that walks you through how to do the critical path analysis without having to do a forward and backward pass. The one vulnerability with our approach is if you were asked a question and basically you had to analyze a box like you see on the screen right now. So we're going to walk you through how to deal with that. Before we do that, I want to explain a little bit about how you get early start and finish dates, late start and finish dates, and things of that nature. Because uh, that's one thing I commonly hear. It's like, I don't understand what, what these dates, where they come from. Um, so, if you will, the top right corner of A, B, and C, or any box for that matter like this, but the top right corner is the early finish day or date of the activity. So A, B, and C respectively, the earliest they could finish is day 2, day 2, and day 9. So A day 2, B day 2, C day 9, and that's because the middle top number is the duration. So A is two days long, thus the earliest it can finish is day 2. B is two days long, the earliest it can finish is day 2. C is nine days long, the earliest it can finish is day 9. Now, to have D be tied to A, B, and C all having to be done, a, B, and C all have to be done before D can start. So the earliest D can start is the start of day 10 because activity C is one of the predecessors and that, has, that takes until the end of day 9. So that is an example of, you know, you could have an early finish for A, B, and C, but your early start is going to be based on the latest of those things that feed into it, for example. And there's there's other logic, you know, as far as going backwards to get your late finish and late start dates. We don't need to go there, but I'm just kind of setting the foundation as far as where these numbers or these dates come from, if you will. And so when we think about this, um, I want you to be able to work the box. So let's, let's look at this box to begin with. Now, the top left is always going to be the earliest or the early start. The top right is going to be the early finish, bottom left, late start, bottom right, late finish. Generally speaking, think of this way. Think of it this way. Early is at the top, late is at the bottom, start is at the left, finish is at the right. So there's a couple of formulas for this and I'm going to show you how to just not have to worry about them because when you're going left or right you're going to count on your fingers when you're going up or down you're going to subtract. So watch my hands to keep, kind of help place the memory tool if you will. Going left to right like I'm moving my hands I'm going to count on my fingers. Going up and down I subtract. Uh, and if you don't do this, then there's formulas you have to remember. But when you go back to work, your scheduling software is just going to pull these dates up if you go to the right view. So why take the time to remember the formulas if you can remember horizontally I count on my fingers, vertically I subtract. Now that said, duration is built from either the top corners or the bottom corners. Some people think the bottom middle number comes from the bottom corner numbers, and that's not the case. So your duration can come from your early start and finish or your late start and finish. And your slack actually comes from subtracting your starts or your finishes. So if you subtract your left corners and get a difference of two, you should always have a difference of two when you subtract your right corners, for example. And so subtracting either the left corners or the right corners would get you your bottom middle number. Now that said, let's go to our next, uh, next image here and walk through this. So if we look here, we're going we're gonna to walk through how we get these numbers. 
So if you look on the right side, you have 11 and you have 14. So 11 from 14 gives me a difference of 3. Okay, 7 from 10 on the left gets me a difference of 3. Thus, that should always be the same difference. The numbers that make the calculation might be different, but the subtraction should always give me the same number. So if I get 3 by subtracting my right corners, I should get 3 by subtracting my left corners. And remember, when I do math up and down or number analysis up and down, I subtract. Now, that gives me my difference of 3, which goes in the bottom middle number. So I could get it from either the left or right corners. Now, the way I get my duration is by counting on my fingers. So if I'm going left to right, I count on my fingers. Now, that said, you're tempted to go, well, the early start is day 7 and the duration is day 5, so the early finish is day 12. No. Watch my fingers. If I know the earliest I can start is day 7, now let's assume whatever day we start on, we start at the beginning of the day. Whatever day we end on, it we end at the end of the day. In reality, you can split days, but from a test perspective, whatever day you start on, it's the beginning. Whatever day you end on, it's the end. So that said, if I start at the beginning of day 7 and I have 5 days duration, watch my fingers. 7, 8, 9, 10, the end of day 11. That's my early finish. Let's test the bottom corner numbers with a five-day duration. Day 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So again, when I'm going horizontal, I'm counting on my fingers. When I'm going vertical, I subtract. Now, from a test perspective, you know, they could ask you what one of these numbers are, you know, as long as you have three numbers, you could calculate any of the other three. Uh, they could ask you to analyze the activity, you know, and the answers might be things like it has a duration of five days, slack of three days, uh, it's on the critical path, you know, things like that. This is not on the critical path. Slack would have to be zero for that. But those are the sort of things that it would be good to be able to analyze. So let's look here. So what are some ways we can get the early start and duration with what you see on the screen right now? Well, I know for a for fact I've got a difference of three on my right corners. So uh, if I have a difference of three on my right, I'm going to have a difference of three on my left. And now, my early would never be bigger than my late. They might be equal if it's on the critical path, but my early start, for example, would never be bigger than my late start. So I know on the right side I have a difference of 3. On the left side I should have a difference of 3. So in this case, 7 from 10 gets me 3. So I could say the early start is day 7. That's how I could get it vertically via subtraction or kind of an inverted subtraction. Now that said, um, how could I get my duration? Well, if I have the 7 which I just calculated, I can now go 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, gets me 5 days, or I could take 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, that would tell me I have a 5 day duration, and I could get my early start by going horizontal. So if I know my duration is 5 days, I could go 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. So horizontally I could count backwards on my fingers, Vertically, I could basically subtract. If I know what my difference is going to be on the, uh, the right side, I should have the same def difference on the left side. Now, what about the late finish? So in this case, on the left side, if I know I have a difference of 3, then basically I could take that top right corner and just add 3 to the bottom right corner, and that would get me my 14. I could also sanity check it if I knew I had a duration of 5 days, so 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 gets me 5 days, so 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 gets me 5 days. So that's, that's how you could attack that late finish either vertically via subtraction essentially or horizontally by counting on your fingers. Now what about the early start? So here, if I know I have a difference of 3 on the right, I know I'm going to have a difference of 3 on the left. So, uh, you know, 7 from, uh, from 10 is 3, so early start looks like a good 7. 
Now you see here again, this is what we just talked through, so feel free to pause this for a minute. And, you know, again, if you want to kind of count horizontally on your fingers, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, you know, going left to right or right to left. And then vertically, you could subtract 7 from 10 is 3, 11 from 14 is 3. So that's my slot. So that's how you attack the box, if you will.